second. Just give me one second as I'm getting it. Up. Okay, so where I left, okay, joins. So that's where you need to have a lot more. Content. So I will still practice furthermore, give more for examples of where it is used, how it is used and everything. Uh, please concentrate on that. And we'll also have something called analytical functions, which is, um, which is useful when the request that you have in your plate is very significant. When I say significant, it's like um, you might have, if you have come across something called comparing data, with some other data, that's where your analytical functions come into picture. Like uh, to give an example, um, I want to compare how is my sales trending compared to last year, same time, or compared to last week, something like that, right? So in those cases, what you do, you have to compare one data point with another data point and give a uh, percentage growth for that uh, for that sale, right? So these kind of things uh, generally we prefer to do it in Excel because it's easy. You just need to, this minus this, uh, no, this divided by this minus one, that will give you a growth percentage, right? So having said that, how to do that dynamically on a SQL and uh, what are some of the important data manipulation techniques that you need to know, or rather uh, uh, ideologies that you need to keep in mind while you're working with uh, data sets, right? So, uh, Let's let's begin today's session. So I have started recording. Yeah. So let me share my screen. One thing that you have to keep in your mind is SQL is a place where you get um, to massage your data and uh, get it to a more consumable form. Right. That's much more important. Now let's say you had uh, input source which had data in millions. Right. Let's say you had. Uh, um, 15 lakh rows of uh, some sales data for last five years or something like that, right? Now, your uh, uh, just keep in mind that you will not, you're not building an online application for your management all the time, okay? More often than not, your SQL comes into picture to ensure that your process of delivering your analytics becomes faster. That's where your SQL helps you in most of the cases. Now, what you do in this case, you need to build a view or um, whatever, like let's say you want to, you have another tool uh, like an Excel or let's say even this Apex, uh, whichever tool, wherever you are entering this data that doesn't process information much faster, right? In those cases, what you do is you crunch and uh, minimize the amount of data in a way that helps you to build your dashboard easily. And the, even the Excel processing takes much lesser time, right? That, that's the whole intent here. And even the file size is much lesser if you have a um, summarized uh, data coming out of a 15 lakh row sales information, right? Now, to give an example, let's say you are, your data had, let's say I'll take an Excel example. Why I'm giving this background is, uh, learning is important, but where are you applying that? That's more important, okay? So that's where, the questions come in your interviews most of the time. So let's say you have a sales data which has a deal ID and then you have some name, customer name or something. I'm taking a sales data example for you guys, but it may be anything else as well. It's like, yeah, so it's a more common example, which is easier to understand. So customer name, then you have something like dollar value or some, some location or region, whatever it is, right? Country. So this kind of info, well, let's say we had these kind of columns around some hundred of them, okay? And then there are like um, 15 lakh rows of data here. So 
you don't need to present a deal id level information to your management all they want to know is how is your sales progressing so that's when you use your uh, sql um, uh, querying um, advantage to say like say select um, by country uh, what is uh, uh, the sum of my dollar from sales and then group by something something and then you'll get a small table and then again you will do another uh, summarized uh, uh, query which again will give you another table for another thing right so this way you you get this data at not a deal id level but at certain different higher above level which you can use as a backend to your excel dashboard or whichever place you're putting or entering this data into based on this data at your in your excel which has like a very limited number of columns which you have selected in your sql query you you will start writing your sum ifs here right sum ifs uh, this is my drop down here based on this data and i get this so what what you're doing essentially here is you're uh, shrinking your huge data into a very small and tiny consumable format which can be used to develop simple dashboards and the and the response time of your dashboard will be much faster so that's one use case which i can tell you because um not everyone tries to use sql uh, the way it has to be used okay so everyone tries to uh, think sql as the god like it can do everything for you no it's not it it helps you to reach 90th percent of your dashboard building process but not 100 percent because the 100th percent is something which you have to use uh, to make a look and feel this is not a gui tool for you to build any dashboards on it but this is a query manager a query language which will help you to massage your data in the way you want very quickly so if you have to run a vlookup on a 15 lakh rows to 15 lakh rows table in your excel it will take at least one hour's time even with the eight processor um, eight processor uh -huh. one moment guys okay so uh, this is one use case another use case is generally uh, you get as i told two two different tables which have more than 10 lakh rows of data and you want to do a lookup and whatever methodology you use in your excel um, sorting it on the lookup column or whatever it still takes a lot of time to look up your in your excel that's when you just quickly load those two columns run a join and get the data within 10 seconds and then put that in your back end of your excel do your next analysis and then understood right so how you use to save your time is what all lies with sql what sql do, does is gives back to you a lot of time for whatever you, additional that you want to do so keep that secret with you i would say because uh, revealing that to your management will not help you any which ways because it it only makes sure that um, this squeeze more out of you that's all right so some of these trade secrets needs to be learned and used in appropriate way so that you you have a, a, an edge over your team members or whoever it is, right so uh, that's the whole point in why you learn additional things like this okay so let's say we started certain things yesterday in terms of joints and uh, we were looking at uh, beginning of those joints let's say what we did yesterday we have history if you are using it you would have got the same thing here also right mm. so i'm doing full join here i did our right outer join left outer join all of this stuff so if i run this it would give me the ones which are there in the left side table and not there in the right side table right so this is all the thing now let's again query what is having what is there in our test one table and then we'll go from there from uh, oh, sorry. Select star. So this is my left-hand side table. This is my right-hand side table. So I have one common to another one is different, right? So that's how it is. Now, what else? What else? So there is a, there is something called cross join. What cross join? What is the usage of cross join? Is now let's say you had 
let's go a new to a new sheet. We had opportunity like, or uh, let's say we had name, we had uh, number, right? And we had uh, color, let's say. X, Y, Z. We had green, yellow, blue. Okay. Now you had. Um, now you had. Let's say the same table then put it here. Uh, now, when you do a cross join with the same table or similar table, what happens in a cross join is each value of this column will be will be permitted and commit combination will be done with the second column and the output will be given. Now, let's say you have name, then you have color. X, X, X. Here, G, Y, blue. Y, Y, Y. And then again, same thing. Z, Z, oh, sorry. So this will be your output of your cross join. Now you might be thinking where this will be used, right? So when you have to get a, a output table, which mashes up two different data sets or the same data set to give you all the combinations possible, in this two columns, then you use the cross join. It's a very rare, a very rare uh, case where you use a cross join, but still, it's a very useful thing. At a very odd time, this will help you, right? So, uh, not uh, it's not a day-to-day -day, uh, kind of a join, but it still helps you in a place where it's you will never know that it might help you, right? So, just give an example. Uh, let's go back to this. So, just give one second. So, let's say Okay, so when I say select star test one cross join test two, what it is doing is for each of those um, complaint IDs in the, the left hand side table, it is permutation uh, doing permutation and combination for all the values in the right hand side table now for triple uh, a2 has a value from wells fargo and triple a2 so it's it's not exactly uh, let's let's see what's there in this one in the first place so let's okay, take this view and keep it somewhere to compare it right so let's say i put it in the, no 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 no, no, no. So this is our view, which we just got as a result, right? Now, if you check what is in test one, it says these two are the two rows we have, which is the first row and the third row, basically, okay? Now, what is there in test two? You see the uh, triple I two again and eight seven two. So the first value of that left side table is multiplied with each row of the second table and the answer and then the final output is given. So it's just a permutation and combination output that you get out of a cross join. Okay. So that's your this one. And then and then coming to uh, certain analytical functions, right? So uh, just give me one second. So it's like I'm just keeping a note of what I'm doing here. Lead function. So So let's let's look at the data in itself first, okay? So that we come back to how a lead or a, so analytical functions, as I told you, comparing with the something that that's one way of using it. When I say lead function, it means what is ahead of my selected row? What is the next row? Compare with that. Now, what is the value of that? Get me that. that that's that's a lead. Lag is what is the previous row? That's your lag, okay? And how to use that? I will tell you in a moment. And then you have um, uh, you have null value, you have first value, last value, and nth value. All of these are used in a um, analytical uh, environment, right? So when let's say we see what is there in our table first, and then we'll start using one of those functions, right? Okay, so let's take uh, complaint IDs, couple of them, triple eight two and triple eight nine, okay? 
Now, let's create a table with three rows, triple eight, two, triple eight, nine, and double eight, seven, nine, okay? Let's create a third table. It says create table test three as, I'll just say date received. Received complaint ID and let's keep it that way. Let's see if it's done. So it's done. So, oh no, no, it created everything. Let me drop. I need only three IDs. Just drop table. Just three. Okay. Now after this, we have where the complaint i is equal or in what was that yeah let's select it again select star from that is user three so four six triple eight two Four six okay, so I'm joined. Four six triple eight nine. Then you have four six double eight seven nine. Okay. Now if we say this three, you should have three rows there. Okay. So this is all of them have a same date. Oh god. Okay, let's try and replace one of those dates in this table. How do we do that? Let's say we use update function, update table, test three. Okay, set date received. Saved equals, equals, let's say 20, 30, we'll do 07, 30, 2013. Where complaint ID equals four six double eight seven nine. Okay, so I'm updating that row with a different. Oh, sorry, I don't need to use that. Okay, I have with a different <coughs> date, so I updated that. Now it should have changed in that table at least. It has changed. Let's change it for the first row also, so that we have some differentiator. So I will do it a little differently. Let's say 15th or something. Okay, so I updated the date in the first row also. Okay, so we have different dates in three different rows now. Now let's say we try to use the lead function to get, okay, uh, let's add a column to this table. Okay, alter table, uh, test three. Add column, uh, sale, or uh, value, let's say value, uh, which has a characteristic of uh, number, right? Number 10, comma 0. Okay, so let's try this. I think this is a default value. Let's say value one. No, no, one second. Sometimes this syntax is no. Okay, so. Yeah, adding a column, add this and then this. Okay, so we need to do that. We need to alter this table. Okay, I'll just say add. Okay. Okay. So now if we select this, we'll have another column that says value one. Now we will uh, just add some values to this. 
value one is equal to 100 <coughs> where this is this okay then when it is double eight seven nine i will say 200 why i'm doing this manually so that you know what we are doing and how i are using certain functions in sql to manipulate your information in the table right so third one is what seven nine triple eight to triple eight nine here we will say three thousand Okay. Now, if we select, we should have got values in all the three rows 100, 300, 3020. Okay. Now, let's say we will try using the VLAG function. Uh, so, now select, select, let's say, value one from test three. Okay. Uh, Let's say lead. Where is it? Okay, lead. Of value one. Okay. Okay. And then we will have one moment. So value one over. over uh, which column we want to see the this one uh, for it to look at which column previous is in the date received column okay over order by so when we say look at this column for the previous we need to order this column in a certain way otherwise your data will be messed up right so order it order this date by column okay date received okay and then you say this has let's say previous value okay value now what you say from test oh sorry we have to do it here uh, here it's sorry not here so lead of this and then from confirm okay not confirm test three i should do a group by i think sorry okay if you see okay i did a value one let me say complaint id and value one also i'll keep now what it is doing if you observe is and let's say date receive also for that matter. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Okay, so a lead function does try to see what is the previous fun uh, value. Okay, so for uh, no, the next value, sorry. Um, it's not a previous, it's the next value. What is leading this value? That's what it's trying to say, okay? So in this case, for triple A2, what is the next value in the row, next row, based on the date column? So 15th is the oldest date, next date is 29th, we are ordering it there. What is the next value is 3000. So for triple A2, the next value is 3000. For triple A9, the next value is 20, which is coming here, right? So that's what it's saying. So when you say lag, lag function how it works is it gives you the previous value that means to say for triple eight two there is nothing previous here this is the first value right so it's zero now for triple eight nine the previous value is 100 so that's what is coming here right so in this case it's previous value. so if you want to do previous and next you can do it in the same thing but yeah so let's say this is previous so we need to be pre otherwise so this will give you your previous value now how this is important is now what i can do here is i can compare and see how much it got how much it grew okay from this state to this state or uh, imagining all of these complaint IDs are same how much was my growth compared to the previous row how do you do that in excel um let's say on 20th we had 
twenty dollars. On thirtieth, we had forty dollars. What was the growth? Current divided by previous minus one. So I had what? How many? How much percentage growth? I had hundred percent growth. If I had a thirty, I had fifty percent growth. If I had twenty one. I had a five percent growth, right? So that's your growth percentage compared to the previous, whatever you are trying to compare. To use this lead lag effectively, you need to have certain your table arranged in a certain way, right? Now in this case, we are we can compare between dates. Now when you have years to get the data, right? Yesterday we saw how to extract year from a date, so you can create a sub table. Based on your main data, which says by year 2021, 2022, 2023, like this, and then we'll have some values here. So now, if you compare, want to compare the year over year growth, you can use this lead lag. How do you use it? In this case, uh, 3000 by 100 minus one is what should be my formula to get the growth percentage. Correct. So let me uh, 3000 by 100. So basically, my value one. Divide my previous value, right? So just put here, like in your Excel formula itself, value one divided by. Close, open this bracket. So I'm dividing the value one column with this lag whole thing, right? And I'm minusing one. So this is my growth percentage. Growth percentage. And let's run this. So it's giving me ninety-nine percent drop in growth. Here it is a twenty-nine percent, or rather two ninety percent increase. Right? How do you get that in a percentage way? There are many ways. Um, okay, one second, one second. So one of them is a very um, HTML kind of a way. I mean, uh, uh, workaround kind of a way. Right? So. Um, one moment, guys. Just there online. So this gives you in a numerical form. But for the you can take out this data and you can format it as percentage in Excel. That that all can be done. But how do you do this uh, uh, in a view like this? This it's little roundabout method. But just to just to satisfy you are. Final output. I'm showing this, but this may not be a very efficient method, right? So when you say round of this column, and how much I want to keep it at, I just want two percentage, uh, two decimal points, and then I'll just multiply this by hundred, and then I'll concatenate this with a percentage sign, right? So I'm using a lot of things here. I'll, I'll tell you what what I'm doing. So if you see here. First one doesn't have anything, so it's still giving me percentage because I'm just multiplying anything with percentage. Second one I'm multiplying and also giving it a uh, this one. What to say? A percentage symbol. Third one is already this one, right? So the problem is it is not giving me uh, the per decimal point which I wanted it to give. So maybe you just uh, multiply this here, okay? And then add your decimal points after this. So this will help you give maybe two percent decimal points, right? So it all depends on where you round it off. I am rounding it off before multiplying by hundred, but now I am rounding it off after multiplying. 100. Now, how do you remove this percentage where there is no value? You can use case statement. Case when this uh, when my Okay, when this whole thing is equals only percentage, then null. Else, else give me the same value till here. End. Okay. Now if I run this, oh something went wrong. Else, oh sorry, I didn't paste it here. so it doesn't give anything there right so how you can use all of the things that we learned in last two days is how this is how it is so how do you concatenate some something with something but this column will be a text column if you concatenate like this okay this can't be used for any 
aggregating like summing rounding or averaging all those can't be done on this column because it's a num text column now now how do you use your division operator or your uh, mathematical operators how do you use your functions and uh, and how do you use your case statement to come out around then also we also saw how to use your lead lag statements here right so this is in a nutshell how you use certain things uh, in terms of analytical functions <clears throat> so that's your lead function that's your lag function right now there is something which is called first value and last value now how is that how does that work is let's say you had um, your table organized in a certain way where you you want to compare the values of the first row with the current row or something like that right so in those cases what we do is we use a function called first value uh, so you know one second and there's another uh, interesting part so here when i say lag i am saying with the previous one i can always say compared to two rows earlier okay not just the previous so i want to do two, two rows earlier right so if i do comma two after lag it will compare uh, let's say this one with something above triple eight two which is not there here this one will be compared with this right so when i when we run this let's see how it works so what it is doing is it's comparing 20 with 100 here that means it's going two rows above this okay so that's it's a uh, uh, syntax here in lead or lag you can use the number of rows it has go can go previous to compare it and give you the outcome of that okay now let's see uh, okay one second One moment, guys, be online. I'm trying to find the, this one. Okay. So, um, in this case, first value can be used. In, I mean, this. Uh, lead lag can also be used on text columns, so to say, right? You can get the uh, previous rows uh, complaint ID also here, not just numerical functions, but you can also get any other thing. I gave it took an example of numerical because that, that makes more sense than anything else, right? So you can also say, let's say, take the same thing, let's select until here, same thing. And then you say lag or lag, uh, complaint ID itself. Uh, let's say only one previous one, then say over order by date received. Uh, received, that's it, right? Uh, from okay, as previous, no, not so, that's three. Okay, I did do from so I think lag is here over order as okay double quotes. I always miss this. So it gives me the previous complaint ID of this row. Okay. So you can use it on text columns also for that matter, even date received also you can do for that matter. So date received. And it will give you the previous date received. So lead will give you the next one, lag will give you the previous one. So that's about that. The first value acts in the same way, but just you need to do first value here. So what it does is in this table, what is the first value? And that's what it's giving me for this. If I do last value, it will give me the first last value of the same thing of this table in that column. So you, sometimes, oh wait. This is giving me everything. So order over this by this or previous. No, last value is a little different. Last value is actually one second, guys. Hmm. 
So, Arabay dead. Is this what's a received descending? It's just giving examples. So I'll come back to you on the last value part of it. But for now, this first value, you remember that, right? So you can also say, um, limit the first and last value between rows also, right? So how do you do that is like, let's say I want to order by date this, and then I just want to see rows between, no, let's say, let's take an example first value for now. Rows between uh, one second. Bottom is and bottom. And bottom. That's right. So this is, the syntax gives me only dates. Uh, I mean information. Unborn proceeding, unborn from yep. So unbounded proceeding, unbounded following. Minus to minus. And the same sentence here. Since it's a small table, little it can only search that much. Okay, fine. So I'll get a better example for you later. Anyway, so that's your first value, last value, lead, lag, and all those stuff. Um, now there's uh, there's another one which says uh, partitioning while you are doing your calculation, right? So just give me one second. I'll give an example for that. So what what is a partition is when you are doing certain things like, let's say we want to rank these three columns and you want to rank it uh, based on certain things, right? So in those cases, your partition helps. Like, let's say I want to rank this table based on X and every time this X changes, my ranking should change. One, two, three, then again, it has to begin for this set of it. It has to give me a new set of ranks. That That's where you use your partitioning. So I will say, over uh, some column partition uh, partition by some column right so that will help me give ranking differently now let's say let's say we'll use the rank function for this particular uh, usage of partition one moment So let's say, uh, let's write a new test thing. Select, same set of stuff. And then we'll say rank. Rank value column. And then we'll say partition by complaint ID as rank. Okay. Oh. Let me see something. So uh, basically partition by is a replacement of order. The combination of these two can be done using a partition by thing, right? So partition by, okay, I think I should put it. This way. Give me one second, I'm just trying to put it in a correct syntax form. No, so over, no. 
so it should be price okay, by partition by price partition by price. okay so let's say I put this here oh, sorry. oh god sometimes now one second let me give to you Oh, uh -huh. here it is. So this is this is rank by over partition by complaint ID. Yeah. Okay, so this should do it, but if I need an order by then I have to do it separately. So uh, I don't need this. So partition over partition by my complaint ID and then I'll say order by date received yes the starting you have written total select selection oh sorry sorry yeah uh, it's true so it's not giving me value one. oh if value one is not there in this column no 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 sorry this is test Okay, so since I'm partitioning it by complaint ID, it is giving me one, 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 right? So if I do it based on, let's say date received, it will give me three ranks for that. No, uh, partition by date, oh, again, it will be the same thing, right? So at the end of the day, since each of them are different, it's giving me different, different rank for them. And all of them are one. If you look at this line alone, it will be one for this column, row, row alone. This is separately ranked. This is separately ranked. That's why it is giving me this way. So if I just say rank, and I don't need to use uh, partitioning here. Okay, order by date received as rank. This will give me one, two, three. But the problem is, it is just giving me order based on the this one. A not a based on the value, right? So how do we do it based on value? Price, 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 price. Order by price. Let's say order by price or, va or sorry, a value. So this gives it uh, correctly, but it is in a uh, descending one. If I do uh, ascending one, it's, let's say descending. And you give you get the ranking based on the value of it. So that's your uh, we're using the partition by and then uh, and those stuff, right? Okay. So what else we have here? Hmm. So sometimes uh, you would need to change the property of the column based on how you want to use it. Now let's say this um, complaint idea at this point. Uh, let's say it's a text column. Let's see what it is exactly in our object browser. Open, yeah. So where is complaint ID? It's a number right now. Okay, so let's take another one. So let's say zip code is a text column or rather worker column, right? So let's use, okay. Let's try changing the property of that into something which we want. Like let's say, how do you change that? There is a function called cast or you can use two number also. I can use cast my zip code uh, as, integer or you say, can say number also but let's say integer for now let's see as changed from on from or in portion i didn't type it correctly so essentially in this case this is a number column okay i can do a sum of this column if need be Oh, invalid number. Okay, it's still integer, and that's why it's not allowing me. 
let's try again. I wait one. Okay, so essentially, if I change this, um, okay, let's say we create a table and show you if that has changed. Okay, now let's say we do it as integer. Integer, remove this, change. Uh, let's say we alter table on home add zip number with characteristics of number and 10 comma zero as length and precision it added that zip number column now let's say we update that column uh, with update set my zip num column is equal to cast my zip code as integer and that should be the value of this column right does it work let's see now. so the reason it's not happening is because there are some places where it is null so let's say we replace nulls or something with zeros case when zip code what is that? zip code is null or zip code is equals to zero then zero else zip code and okay this is my syntax. So first we'll update the zip code column and then we'll update the zip number column. So let's use update statement again. This set zip code. I'm updating an existing column here, okay? And I'm saying this. So if the zip code column is null, put it as zero. I'm using a case statement here. So expected number, but correct cat character. So there is something which is having an alphanumeric uh, value in this table. So that's why it's not allowing us to do any manipulation to that column. Select distinct uh, zip code from concom order by zip code, let's say ascending. So there are alphabets here. So that's the reason it doesn't allow us. So let's say we run it for another lot of rows and see if XX is the same thing everywhere. Is there anything else? So we don't have anything else, only XX. So let's say we'll just replace XX. So I, I'm trying to um, do things uh, based on a problem statement here. I'm trying to convert zip code number column into a number column. And what are the hurdles I'm facing? I'm having a characters in it. I mean, having a lot of things in it, right? So I'm trying to update that column with whatever I know in terms of replacing the text uh, into something, something, and then converting it into a um, into a number column. So in this case, if I have to update first the, let's say I'll take the same thing. Uh, let me copy this. And I'll say replace zip code Don't worry, like in Excel, this uh, SQL will have lakhs and lakhs of uh, or lots of functions. Uh, getting used to them in a day is not possible, but the critical ones which we generally use are something which I am trying to help you with. Okay. So I'm just doing XX and then I'm doing replace that with null, okay? So it replaced it. Now let's say we run the same distinct, uh, this one. So it replaced all the XXs. Let's see if we have anything which has a X in it, where zip code, oh sorry. 
score like next there is nothing like that so that's great so we can eliminate this now this one is there anything which is null where where zip code is null so you can also say is null null is a keyword okay so there are rows which there is null right so we'll update nulls with zeros okay what happened okay it's, just, it's not null it's hyphen so let's say we replace our hyphens with this thing let's see. so it says this so let's try okay it still says character so i mean uh, how you build your uh, whole stuff depends like this right so um, it takes some more time. I don't want to waste the class's time, but you can research further and see how you can convert the zip code into a number column. That's that's one of your assignments. Let me put it that way. Okay. So I, I'm just trying few uh, ways to see why it is. If you want, you can extract the zip code column offline and see where is that null and is there any space which is causing it or something like that, right? So in this case, there may be space which is causing it. If I do it that way, and see if it works, then that may help our cause or something like that. So uh, try doing different things and see if you can update this column or see how we can do it, okay? That's fun. Now, next is uh, in terms of how we use um, uh, to convert uh, data types into certain thing, other data types is, let me just give me one second. So we have something called uh, two number, to date and then your two uh, character. So there are three important things uh, in SQL where you convert a data type uh, into a different data type, right? So this is all something which happens on the fly, okay? So it's not that you're uh, changing the property of a column, but you want to use that column in certain way when you're doing a select selection of that column uh, in your, uh, what to say, uh, select statement or while you are doing some, uh, this one, right? So how do you, uh, let's say we use uh, the to date function, right? So let's first get the data, uh, how it looks like right now. And then we can start using some of these. Select start from con. And you see, one second. It's taking time to run. Okay, so we have a date which is in this format 07 29 2013. Right now, if you want to do it uh, in a different way, you want to change it the look and feel of it to, to, to get a different uh, view. Now, how do you do that? Like, let's like, so select uh, so three important things to date, to character, and to number. Okay, there are many more, but these are the important ones. So let's say to date. Uh, this, this 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 is used <clears throat> when you want to change a non-date column to a date column. Generally, okay. Um, I mean, in some cases, even the date column to a different format also you can use this. Not an issue with that. So let's say in this case we are using date received. Okay. Yeah. Saved, and I want to make it. DD mm y y y y as date from from is it wrong from as date no date is a keyword so I can't use that so let's not say date one not a valid month so uh, it's saying um, not a valid month because my format is not Correct, right? So let's let's try it out this way. First, let's give it what it is having in terms of format, and then we'll convert this. We can do a nested to date function. That's okay, nested functions. This we will convert to 
M or let's say M M M or let's say D B M Y Y. Not a valid month. M M D D Y. What is my current? This one. M M S K. One second. So that's where I was saying you, right? So sometimes your time goes into finding what's happening in your query, right? So that's why you need to be careful in trying to see what, what I need to do next in terms of getting the date correctly. Okay. One second, guys. So it's in my date format is different. So let's see what is my date format, the back end. So it's MMDDYY, no. Generally, it tells you when you're loading the data, right? So, MMDDYY, it's the same MM. This one. Okay, so this is the date format. The valid month. Okay, sorry, this is character. Okay, I just want to see two letters. Let's say this. Let's receive is in this format and you're trying to convert into a different format. One moment. Date, character, date, receive, DD, MMRR is my current format. Let's say do it as character. Instead of date. Okay, so what I'm trying to do now is I'm converting my date column into a different format, which is GDMMRR. That is my month is in between, my year is only two digit and my date is two digits in which way, right? So I'm kind of, actually it's already a date column. So I am converting a date column into a character column, okay? So that's one usage. If you had happen to have a column, which is, having dates but the column type is not date okay in those cases you can use two date okay so you need to have a non-date column with dates in it to use two date function so that's the reason it was not working earlier but two character works because this is a date column and i'm trying to convert date column into a character column yeah and i'm trying to use a different format here okay so if I, even if i use rrrr it might work let's see All right you know it gives you the year only here, okay? So there are many ways to extract a simple information from a column. Even an year extract function can be used to get the year out of a specific column. So that's the usage of your two date and two number, all those columns. Two number is nothing but uh, uh, to get a column in a specific format, okay? Now let's say uh, you want to change a number from decimal, uh, so the whole number to a decimal, right? So in that case, how do you use two number there? Let's say we will use the complaint ID column, right? Which has numbers in it, and we want to convert that into a different uh, format. Uh, one second. There are certain format codes that you have to use, but I'm trying to get an easier one for you. Example.
Okay. So let's say uh, we'll use the same uh, column, component ID, and we'll say number. Let's say component ID. And I'll say, let's the number format be 999, I think five digits dot 99. Oh, two number ID, sorry. Invalid number because that column is not valid. So it's not converting it in, in, in this case. So let's say, no, no, no. You can use constants also to get your, uh, what to say, um, example done, but uh, two number complaints. Let's say, let's say this is so two character first, and say nine nine here also. Let's see. Nine. Then convert that as number. That's not agreeing. So let's say we remove this. Let's see if this works. It also doesn't work. So it, basically, it's not agreeing us to convert the complaint ID into a number column for whatever reason. It might have some null values in there somewhere, which is not allowing us to we convert that to. So let's try this again. So let's say two number complaint ID. And we have number as double nine, double nine. Let's try this. So it's basically not agreeing to convert the column into a number. So to just give you an example of how this works, let's say it will take a constant 100 and do this. So it gives you 100. Now, if I want to change this to something like um, Thing like okay, so this is number. So let's say we say only two digits invalid number because it has three digits, so it doesn't allow the third without the formatting in proper place, it will not allow you to get the third one, right? So, two num so this is it. So, what I'm trying to do here is I'm taking a text column and trying to convert them to a number. So you imagining 100 was there in one of our columns as a text that would have got converted into number. But complaint idea, I believe we need to extract the data and see where it has certain things. Let, I mean, I will check that and get back to you in the next class. But yeah, so two number, two character and two data are the three important functions. Uh, it they varies on use cases. Um, you need to be very careful in using them. So, okay, uh, it, it depends on your, data structure, how it is before you use these functions. Uh, so that's the reason, uh, be careful. Don't assure anything to your management before you check yourself on what's possible and what's not possible, okay? And then you start uh, working on it to get the final analysis done. That's your um, cast function to date to this one, cast joins, and then we have, um, something called substrings. So let's say you had, uh, so in Excel, you would have got this functions called left and right function, right? So that extracts a specific um, characters out of a column, right? So in this case, let's say we take the whole table and see what null columns we have. Where is that? This one. So let's say we want to take anything that comes after the third character in the product name column, right? So how do we do that? So we'll select substring. Okay. Now what's my column name? It's product. Uh, name, I want to have uh, information from the 
third starting from the third uh, till how much how much length let's say five five characters from there okay as partial or something No, not at this double quotes uh, from on let's say we just do a distinct of this what's this okay apex doesn't support substring okay so what's the substring syntax in oracle give me one second so substring is a function in ms sql okay in oracle it may be slightly different so it's sub str not substring okay so th this is what i was talking about there may be slight changes in terms of what you use but it'll be the same so let's uh, select product name also to see oh, has it done correctly based on what we are asking it to do okay so now so in this it's taking from the third including third it is taking and it is taking five characters from there including space or whatever it is right so that's your substring how you use it depends on what you want to uh, find right let's say i want to take uh, find uh, the second half of second word after space in all of this right so in those cases what you do is you can use uh, a combination of um, a find function uh, and then your substring that way what you can do is you can just say um, only when there is a space okay then you start giving me the this one what to say no extract the start extracting the character fine okay so one second guys so what i say is uh, so instead of third position, I'll say in string, okay, in string product name, find me the space in it, right? So what I'll say is, it's a single character, the space in it, and from that place on, start taking five characters. So in this case, my space starts here, and from there on, it's taking whatever file. So let's say we do 20, just to keep it. So after space, whatever comes, it is taking as the, uh, it. I mean, it is cutting off the first word, basically, in all of this. If you want to make this look a little decent, just say, uh, it's a sentence case. I think it's sentence case. Wait a minute. So proper. Okay, so how do we do the answer? Oh, um, in Excel, you have okay, I'm just thinking. Okay, it's in INIT cap. I believe this is what we use. So, initial letter as capital and rest of them as normal. So, that's your okay um function for fu proper function in excel so in it capital is initial letter will be capital uh for all the words and then the rest of them will be small letters so that's your uh, way of formatting your data here okay so we extracted the uh, information like the second word and then we made it look, look little decent like here right so that's how you do uh character uh, extraction or uh, ensuring that you get a uh, limited number of words from a specific column is this how you do it okay now there is uh, also certain things which are system built in okay now let's say um, you want to do an analysis where you compare today's date 
every time you run something with this right so in those cases what you what we have is um, you need to have some something which is already there in the system that you want to just take, use it in your select statements not all the time you want to use data from your tables that you have loaded right so certain system variables will be there uh, just need to be aware of them so one of them is uh, your in this case you have something called sys state uh, which is select sys state state from you don't need to select any table here there is a uh, what 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 i can call this this is like a inbuilt table or a uh, alias for a dummy table right dual is not a table but just a um, uh, fill in word for a table name for extracting system variables so sys state is not without underscore so what it is doing is sys state is not there in any of my table that i loaded now it is a inbuilt system variable which can be extracted using um, using this variable here right so say i'm saying select sys date from this so let's say um, we want to use this so let's say system date in in this uh, concom uh, what to say uh, table now when i say a dot this one so it's always useful um, to calculate how many days it is since something right now let's say we first select the entire thing uh, come on. now what we'll do is we'll just say uh, uh, we will let's say calculate the difference between today and this date received here date received uh, minus uh, I, let's try this out state it may not work i think i have to do a select statement within a select statement yeah it still works so sys date should be first for all we know because newer date on the left hand side minus your state so this gives you see so it looks very odd so what we'll do is we'll round this to the nearest zero this case so it's all same date so that's why so let's say we say like uh, distinct And it gives you different values because from today it's around 3000 days back all of these records with i mean all the date received falls 3000 days back from today okay so that's how you use system variables not just system date there are a few other variables as well which are uh, sometimes specific to certain environments that you're working in right but no matter what the current date or the system date might remain most of the cases same okay so just be aware of this okay these are some of the concepts that you need to know that it is there okay some uh, some uh, what to say features that is available for you in sql which you can which will come to your mind when you're trying to do something so um, is something like this available question yourself when you know when you're stuck at something right so think about okay is is this something which is already available in the system which i'm still trying to break my head on how to get it right so what instead of this date if you just say 10 10 whatever today's date is it will be hard coded that means next time when someone runs this query it will always take 10 10 not the current date whenever you're running the query right so sometimes it has to be dynamic and that's where you use the system variables right so that's about uh, variables okay and then there are uh, database level concepts certain so a few things which are uh, which are helpful to know right now let's say let me go back to my excel so till now you know um, uh, just to give a hierarchical structure right so you have your database here which is the one then you will have something called catalogs okay how, how it is organized i'm just trying to give a picture to you then there will be catalogs Catalog. Catalog. Something like this. 
then you will have your schemas under these okay uh, i will come back to you in what is this okay just a second so you'll have schemas here separately for this so uh wait, let me put something here so it's easier for you to go so under database we'll have you have catalogs under under catalogs you'll have schemas so i'm jumping back to the first portion of what where we started just to make sure that you don't don't miss that concept so here you'll have schemas okay so one database can have multiple catalogs and multiple schemas what is a schema is something where it holds all of your various database i mean components which you actually see right like let's say uh, tables views procedures uh, then functions everything whatever is a user wants to store gets stored in a schema okay so <clears throat> where you will work at a very small amount of time is with at this level right schemas catalogs and database are all built by generally admins you are a front end user who try to access your schema where uh, tables in in a specific schema now you need to know small things like under a particular database under a catalog uh you might find multiple schemas like let's say in your organization you might have a schema for sales you might have a schema for financial uh, bookings you might have a schema for something else so it also can happen that some organizations have one schema under that they might have a uh, sales table financial data table and whatever it is right so it depends on how organizations work and how they have organized their back end data so be aware of it You, if you have access to a specific schema uh, it may be due to security issues they have given you uh, let's say this is a sales schema then you will have something called a financial data schema okay so for restricting people to access specific set of data they might limit given have given you access to this and you might be wondering why i don't have this particular information so you might want to go back to your admin and ask like what is how is the structure of my database so that i can understand what uh, i am missing and what i need from you as an access uh, from a access uh, request standpoint right so just keep these things in mind my in your mind and coming back to this place um, few important things that you need to know is tables are something which is um, let's say uh, visible and Uh, written on disk okay well, let's put it that way so when you have a table that is literally existing so if you go here in my object browser i have these are my tables which are existing even if i don't do anything tomorrow when i come back they'll be there and they they are not um they are not a dynamic one right so it's like hard coded this this data is hard coded and it it can uh, never change even if i come back tomorrow right now there are another uh, set of things which is called views what is a view is nothing but uh, a dynamic table if i can put it that way right now now if we have to go back to our examples in queries let's go back to our sql commands so if we go back to our history now let's say we did this right system date received from comcom now when we run this it presented as a data here at the bottom right this is not a stored table right it is showing me the data but this is not stored anywhere at the back end it is at this moment it is running it from its memory right but it's not stored anywhere so when you uh, delete this query and uh, leave it this is a vanish it exam i mean it uh, it gets deleted from the memory that's it you can't see this again anywhere even if you go to the object browser here right now what does a view do is what is a view is you are you want to store whatever um, you have created as a simple calculation or a query into a view but you don't want to store it as a table so a table gets hard coded so all of these values get hard coded but in a view you can have something like this dynamic okay so create view as this get stored as a view if you see here 
you can create a view here. So this view, if I have to see what they have written at the back end, SQL. So they are saying, um, it's a complex one actually to understand for you guys. So this is a view created out of multiple tables and they have, and it it's it's a it sits in a virtual layer, not on a table level layer. So uh, that's a, uh, that's where so views are kind of uh, on the fly tables. That's what I can tell you, right? So that's, that's your views. What are procedures? Is nothing but you might have created like how we did uh, here. Uh, let's say. Okay, let's say let's take this itself. So if if I have to go to my view. I have got this SQL written from by some developer to create this whole thing. Now, this can be a procedure, okay? So what, what this procedure does is every time I, I if I name, though, let's say, let's uh, every time I name, ask it to do certain things like a macro, it creates that and does that, or it, it does the job what I have stored it in, stored in it, right? So I will call this procedure whenever I want it to be done in my queries or anywhere. So if I have to go to my procedures. So here, if you see, so it's saying this is a procedure which, which does this whole instruction set when it's run. So uh, when we call this procedure, okay, uh, or execute this procedure, it, it does all of this here. So it creates, selects this thing, and then it creates or whatever. Um, it does a function uh, which is looping based on certain time zone. It's adding something, deleting something. It's checking the user and doing all of this stuff. So a procedure is something, uh, if I have to give an equivalent in Excel, uh, like a custom function. So you have your sum function, your um, whatever, I mean, max functions, right? Which is built-in functions in Excel. Similarly, if you go a level ahead, you can create your own functions in Excel using VBA. Similar way, but a little more advanced, where not just functions, but you can create a whole set of steps to for this SQL to execute whenever you call or execute this procedure, right? So you every time you come into your, um, your uh, development environment, and execute that procedure and it does the job for you. You don't need to write this whole whole statement, copy paste in some notepad in your desktop or somewhere, nothing. You can store it as a procedure and execute it whenever you open your uh, daily things. There are certain things which jobs or something in, uh, in cloud uh, databases which execute based on a set time interval as well, right? So those are called jobs, but those are little uh, advanced ones for you. You just need to know the structure of how I told you right now, and what are these things, some of them, and uh, how do you put them across in front of your interviewer? I will share a PDF with you guys, uh, brush through that. I would not say uh, mug it up or something, but brush through that and you'll get some important uh, concepts on how, how an SQL, um, environment runs right so that part i will do i'll share that pdf with you guys and also i will share by today uh, an assignment uh, so that we can look at some of you uh, or all of you um, how do you do that and your, the results that you got based on what uh, was requested for in the assignment right that part we will do towards the end of this week and we'll also look at uh, spend some time on what are the questions that you might face in an interview uh, and how to tackle it and some stuff like that right so um, it's not just enough to know how to do certain things but it was also uh, important to know how you apply the knowledge of sql in certain cases so most of the time uh, it'll be a mini uh, case or a, um, what to say, scenario based uh, question uh, you might get, which you have to answer efficiently. Um, it may not require to have 100% command language, but if you know how to do it, or if you have knowledge of this can be done this way, then you can still answer the question of the interviewer. At the end of the day, not all the SQL developers have knowledge of all the functions that
that is available in SQL environment. Okay, so it depends on how you use right now. Uh, just a little bit of off topic. Any anything in nature survives when you continue mostly use it. If you don't use something, it just wears down. Same thing happens when you start using SQL environment. If you start using a specific set of functions all the time in your job, you remember that. When you stop using them, you don't remember them because that's something which you use point in time and you start searching for it in Google and you do it, okay? To give an example of how, what happened with me in one of those interviews. One of the, this was like uh, probably the first, uh, two, three years of my career. And the interviewer asked me, uh, he gave me an Excel file and asked me to write VBA codes and asked me to write functions and get an output uh, of what they want for certain questions. I did those function part easily, but when it came to macros, I was not so thorough at that point. What I did is I, uh, I told the interviewer upfront, see, I don't know to write a macro from scratch. Let me put it this way. I don't want to bluff and time, waste your time. But what I can still do is, if you allow me to use Google, I'll still get the output what you want within matter of whatever stipulated time that you have. So I was upfront with him saying that I can do this, but with help. And the fact of the life is any person who wants to um, make sure that he's transparent in front of your interviewer, uh, you need to, I'm not saying be Satya Hashchandra here, but try to be logical here. Don't bluff because as soon as you start making it up, he will know and he will reject you. That's the reason. Okay, so when I said this, he's okay, the the scoring will go down, but you can still attempt it. That's what he told. I was, I was like, I'm perfectly fine. For me, getting a chance to present my skills is more important than telling you I don't know this and losing my chance altogether, right? So that's that's what I told them. And he allowed me and I, I did whatever they asked me. And then, uh, I mean, the rest is history. Like I got selected and everything else happened, right? So that's, that's a, a whole point here. Your honesty adds points to you uh, where your technical skills might have lost certain points to you, right? So it all has two aspects to it whenever a question comes to you. One is your psychological points, one is your uh, technical points. So play it that way, okay? So um, we cover a lot of uh, things today and uh, we will also touch base upon the joins part a little bit further in the next class for some time, beginning half of it. Uh, uh, and then we will jump into assignments and the interview questions in next class. So we'll do 30, 30, 30 in next class, 30 minutes of joins, 30 minutes of assignment uh, review, and 30 minutes of interview questions. That way we'll do. Uh, if we all start at eight o'clock, then we have another 30 minutes of time where we can do assignment review again, right? So, so that's the plan for next class. 30 minutes of uh, joins, one hour of assignments, and one 30 minutes of interview questions. So make sure that you finish uh, whatever assignment I'm going to give you today and uh, present that in the next class. Uh, at the end of the day, end of the day, most of these assignments will be looking for the query that you have written. What have you written? How you have written? Whether you got the requested output? This all it will be there on your assignments right so try doing them tomorrow or this week and uh, come back to me end of this week right so we had a lesser attendance today compared to yesterday whoever didn't attend um, uh, some uh, we need to post them as well to do the assignments and come back to us on saturday okay so now uh, let me go let me open the forum and let you ask any questions that you have uh, and then we can wrap up today's class okay it's all uh, the forum is open guys so you have any questions let me know we can we can address that now you guys don't feel your mouth frozen is it because i keep talking my my, my jaws are like mm -hmm. completely paining <laughs> <laughs> and you, you're muted and you're talking to your mom. This is all you talk there. <laughs> talk something to me also, no? Not just your family members. Sir, what is your learning is uh, no SQL. 
No, this is not no SQL. No, no SQL doesn't have any statements at all. Okay, it is very very plain. Um, the the language name itself says it doesn't use any SQL statements to extract data. That's a separate topic altogether. Uh, if you want, I can give you a brief on that in next class to see how it differs from SQL. That part I can do for you. Okay. So uh, I, uh, I had a doubt about uh, like there are different type of SQL, uh, no SQL, Postgres SQL, mm. uh, MySQL and uh, and SQL Server. No, no, so, no. Wait. Yes. So in terms of types of SQL, it depends on which company uh, is maintaining that set of syntaxes, right? Now, Oracle has its own version of SQL, Oracle SQL, okay? Microsoft has its own SQL, which is Microsoft SQL. MS SQL is not Microsoft SQL, uh, or it's not, not MS SQL. MySQL is not MS SQL. That's an open source uh, syntax maintained by Again, Oracle itself, but it's not a paid version of it, right? So um, NoSQL is another version of it. So what are predominant in market is Microsoft SQL, Oracle SQL, MySQL. These are the three ones. And all of them have 95% of syntaxes matching with each other. What differs them is mainly some advanced functions that they might have incorporated in their languages based on the usage and current trends in the market. So that's what it differs, right? So you don't need to worry about what types of SQLs are there. It hardly differs by five or 4% at the, at, a, at the top level, right? So most of these analytical functions will be same, but what happens is if you have A, B, C in Oracle, you might have A, B, C, D in uh, ML, uh, Microsoft SQL, or something which is more in, uh, something which is advanced in Oracle might not be there in Microsoft or vice versa, however it is, right? So SQL server is nothing but the server which contains all the databases in it, okay. or rather I would put it this way. Um, it's, a, it's an environment which your admin maintains to which you connect your, um, your uh, client to query the data. Now in your case, if you go back, now, whatever we are running in apex.oracle.com, that is that is query to an Oracle database that is sitting at the back end. Okay. So that, that, that's how it works. Now, in your XC and SQL developer um, combination, your XC is an SQL server where it has uh, it's a it's a name given to the database. That's all, nothing else. Okay. So don't confuse yourself with server and the types of SQL uh, command languages. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Any any other questions? I am assuming you're all experts right now. And tomorrow itself, we can deploy you guys into some MNCs to write advanced level SQL statements. Right. That's what I assume. But the problem is in SQL, if you don't practice it or don't don't work on it for at least three weeks, uh, if you give a gap of three weeks, you will, your mind will start eliminating those neural connections which had these learnings in it, okay? So regardless of you use it in your career or not, have a good habit of working on SQL or trying to incorporate it in some shape or the form in your life. That's, that's what I can say because that's, uh, that's a stepping stone uh, for learning anything advanced after that, if you want to, like big data, Hadoop, all those stuff, right? So you need to have an understanding of how a database works so that you can uh, take it to the next level. Uh, Kishore, to the high level, can you just give our candidates uh, notes kind of so that, uh, uh, so that at least uh, two weeks, one, so one week, one, they just look into it so that they'll understand better so that they'll not forget or anything like that. Okay, I, I will prepare a small, uh, what to say, uh, let's say a crash crash course document or something. So okay, let, okay. let me find that. I mean, let me put it all together and share it with yes, you yes. guys. Yeah. Let, so that, let it not be heavy so that at least yeah. uh, they not forget. So when they see, 
Mm-hmm. So uh, they'll be keeping the things in mind. Right? As you told, uh, the connections yeah. must not go right. Right, That's right. Important. Yeah. So I will do that, but I'm just writing down as my to do. Fine. Okay. Okay. So I will not uh, bug you guys anymore. Uh, if you have, i'm damn sure no most of you might be waiting for this class to over so that you can do your sunday's regular activities <laughs> <laughs> okay so i will i will not take more time of yours uh, and so, yeah of course you uh, know assignment is very strict about it so we will yeah. also post it in the group people who do the assignment with uh, oracle only those people will be allowed for the machine learning in data science classes so this is very strict and we'll post it in the group also uh, excuse us for the candidates who told that they are not they didn't attend you know they had network issues or whatever it may be they have to see the recordings and they need to do the assignments right so only candidates who do the regular assignment of oracle they be allowed for the further classes so this usually we do it always and uh, yeah so we are doing for this time also because yeah because we we, we are putting our effort to do at the best whatever possible and we need the same support from your side correct and to be frank uh, with respect to analytics with respect to data science i being a corporate trainer for four uh, uh, you know top five companies in india okay if i can say any top five companies in india with corporate training or so and so i was a trainer there and uh, even now the data science training where people do for pgdm people do for diploma in machine learning data science i am a trainer there so i have seen that no one are spending this much of time just to teach sql oracle so and so right because we are doing it because we want our candidates to be the safer side when goes to interview and uh, we expect the same support from your side if you are not doing it then you will, you will be the losers and uh, yeah so we don't entertain such things that's the reason we are strict about the assignments okay so kishor will be posting the assignment by the end of the day at least by the end of the day uh, so that you can have around one week of time luckily we have a lot of holidays this week if i'm not wrong at least for the indian you know corporates so you can utilize it and please do it at your best so if you have any questions or something like that please keep it noted uh, assignments must not be the questions again okay that point has to be taken care when you are given the assignment or teacher has given the assignment are not able to solve that must not be the question come to the conclusion at the worst case if you are not able to solve it bring it bring it down wherever best possible it that he will be helping you on that okay that's a uh, case uh, right kishor is that yeah yeah. Your, your yeah 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 okay thank you kishor thank you so much yeah. Yeah. sir uh, this uh, if if we want to know for what are the commands in sql like is there any directory or uh, is there any uh, uh, like alphabetical order of commands uh, where you can check and try to implement it uh, one by one okay so i i'll share a pdf uh, file with you guys uh, which is like as earlier in if you have attended the tableau class i had shared a pdf file similar one i'll share for this as well i can go through that uh, for in terms of list of commands okay so you will find that in uh, online I, i can share a couple of websites with you but that document should help you a lot uh, for you to gain uh, traction on a sql language that i can do Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay, Kishore. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Have a nice Thanks. weekend. Yep. Have a nice weekend.